James is rebuking to the maximum the rich are guilty of judging and putting death the righteous people the right people or the believers see this category would not only include jesus who was the ultimate righteous one but also all the believers who are like the lord so includes all the righteous people during those times who were treated very badly and brutally by the wealthy unbelievers so with all the four points why james is rebuking what is the application we get from these six verses as james is using very sharp words targeting rich people who are spiritually poor the very first one we need to know is talking up riches or wealth will reap miserable dividends that's what we saw in verses 1 to 3 if you look into the face of an unsaved wealthy person there is always stress there is always worry there is always bitterness and above all in spite of all the wealth all the money they have there is an emptiness in them there is an emptiness in them because they do not have christ in them the wealthy people they discover some some of them they discover that money cannot purchase happiness Gracious God, we thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for your wonderful fellowship you have given us, Lord. We are handful, Lord, but you have done more powerful and amazing things, Lord, in our lives. We are so grateful for that. Thank you for your will in our lives. And nothing is invincible, Lord. Thank you for that message. Be with our prayer group you speak lord open our hearts and minds to the words that you are sowing in our hearts help us to implant those words and let us follow it accordingly lord be with us throughout this message and you speak lord in jesus precious name amen 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 Today's lesson is from James 5 1 to 6. This is a chapter where James is warning the wealthy people just like the verses from 1 to 6. I will read from the New Living Translation. Look here, you rich people, we and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth eaten rags your gold and silver are corroded the very wealth you were counting on will eat away your flesh like fire this corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment for listen hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay the cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the lord of heaven's armies you have spent your years on earth in luxury 
satisfying your every desire you have fattened yourself for the day of slaughter you have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you in 1923 there was a group of elite business people who met in a luxurious hotel in um, chicago uh, it was called as the edgewater beach hotel i think like now i think like this hotel is now converted into a um, apartment complex back then in the 1920s it was a luxurious hotel these business people Uh, during those di- times were more influential people and they were considered the wealthy moguls during those period like in the early 20s to name a few a handful it was charles schwab he was the president of uh, bethlehem steel corporation another person was richard whitney he was the president of the new york stock exchange third person is albert fall who was the secretary of interior who was serving under president harding in us at that time the fourth person is jesse livermore he was a stock trader he was a he was considered a pioneer in stock trading and the fifth person was called ivar kruger he was a great financier at that time the reason why i mention about these people is these five i'm just mentioning five there were like another two or three more these few handful of people they controlled more wealth and their total assets the total assets of these people were more than the money what the united states treasury had so you can imagine how much amount of wealth and assets they had at that time and these people were considered as examples for entrepreneurship and financial success after 25 years you know what happened charles schwab who was the bethlehem steel corporation president he died with more than 300000 dollars in debt and he was not even able to pay his apartment rent when he died and then richard whitney who i told he was the president of the new york stock exchange he was serving a prison sentence because he was swindling money from the stock exchange and albert fall who was the secretary of the interior under president harding he was also serving prison because he was accepting bribe and then jesse livermore who was a stock trader he committed suicide and he described himself as a failure in his suicide note and ivar kruger who was the financier he killed himself by using a gun what a pathetic situation these people were buried in their humiliation their defeat the crimes they were involved the sickness and the financial collapse like these there are many people even now who are living in a very depressing and pitiable condition the wealth the power the prestige they do nothing to help overcome their personal anxiety and the guilt they suffered in their life in reality the great intelligence and the hard work or it might be legacy 
it will make a person so wealthy whatever may be the wealth or materialistic possession a person has it takes god given wisdom and the supernatural humility to able to manage that huge wealth which is very very important as we started looking into the book of james he focuses on the real faith when we looked into the previous chapters in the previous studies when we started with chapter 3 we were looking into the big picture real life faith produces genuine humility we have already seen that our goodness comes from god given wisdom it's not our own that's what we saw when we started chapter 3 the verses 13 to 18 and then in chapter 4 james told to turn to god not to ourselves to have a peaceful relationship those are the study we saw that in chapter 4 1 to 10 and then last time we saw how james was warning we people against playing god instead of submitting ourselves to god's sovereignty that was in chapter 4 11 to 17 now in james 5 1 to 6 he mentions he rails against the pride that so easily mislead the wealthy of the present world so in each lesson last time from chapter 3 13 to 8 and from 4 1 to 10 and from 11 to 17 james is encouraging we should have god enabled humility we'll go from verse to verse then we will know what he is mentioning if you look into the very first verse james 5 first verse especially in the new living translation it says look here if you look into uh, the nasb version it says like come now it's more like a personal word to every other person who is reading this if you look into niv it says like now listen so it's more like a command it's almost like james is talking to every other individual who is reading this we have seen the same phrase look here or now listen in the previous chapter Uh, James 4:13 when he was addressing the autonomous businessman it's almost as if like James is expecting certain people to be distracted of their own pursuits that he wants to cut them off he says listen up when in, in chapter 4:13 he says he is addressing them as listen up for those people who were spending their days as if there wasn't any god at all here he is mentioning to people those who spend their money as if the money doesn't have a master we always have to be very sure that there is a master for everything above all we have got the lord over there right we have the money but it is god who has given that wealth that we need for our day to day activity but we have to respect that financial decision or the money we have 
and we have to be always acknowledging to god who has given that opportunity to have that money to live a proper life in a proper way but this is this is the first time in the whole book of james he is directly addressing the wealthy people earlier we have seen in the first chapter wherein he said that the rich man should glory in his humiliation because he will fade away in the midst of his pursuits like grass withering in the scorching sun and the second time he is mentioning is in chapter 2 5 and 6 he is almost like scolding the people those who favor the wealthy over the poor because the rich and the powerful are the ones who were trying to persecute not trying they were persecuting the christians so based on these verses in chapter 1 and chapter 2 and right now in chapter 5 it's so easy for anybody to conclude that james is not for the rich people we might conclude by saying the poor will go to the heaven and the rich will go to the hell we are not going into that into clearly the scripture it says it's not a person's financial wealth or poverty that determines the our relationship with god it's only our spiritual condition being outwardly rich or poor it refers to how much of the world's goods a person has at our disposal our inward wealth or poverty refers to our person's relationship with god which is expressed through our love to explain this it is better that we have kind of a classification so i will give you the classification there are four kinds we can have this <clears throat> classified for the physical condition and for the spiritual condition so listen carefully so you will be able to understand what i'm trying to say here there can be four classification based on physical condition and spiritual condition a person can be physically poor and spiritually poor this is one of the classification so physically poor and spiritually poor the second category is a person can be physically rich and spiritually rich the third category is a person can be physically poor and spiritually rich and the fourth category the last category is a person can be rich physically and poor spiritually if you look into this most of us would say like oh we all will fall under the third category where in like we are physically poor but spiritually rich which is not the way it is because if you if you look into the bible if you read into the verses most of the time when we read poor in the bible it refers to people who are homeless those who are helpless and they are destitute they often will not have anything to eat not much clothes to wear and nowhere to stay by biblical standards even most people living in our society the standard of poverty wouldn't have been regarded as truly poor the reality is that most of us most of us we are all blessed by god almighty with more than what we need so our position is rich so we have to be very careful by 
defining our condition. So assuming the fourth category, which is physically rich and spiritually poor. Are we into that category? Here James is rebuking the people who fall under this category, who are physically rich and spiritually poor. Some believers can be outside of God's will in regard to the financial situation. But here we have to be very careful that James is targeting the unbelieving rich people. He is targeting the unbelieving rich people who always oppress the poor. If you look into the verses, the very first verse, it says, weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Why does James say, weep and howl for your miseries? Behind this general warning, there lies a long history of wailing because of the judgment that comes upon the ungodly. Where do I get this information from? If you, if you read Isaiah 13, 6 and 4, 6, it gives the same information that wailing and crying because of the judgment that is to be coming upon the ungodly. This is the same context James is also addressing the oppressive rich people doing on the poor, poor people at that time. He mentions the last days in verse 3 and then discusses how we believers should live until the day the Lord is coming in verse 7. The warning is very, very clear. Trusting in the strength of the riches instead of trusting in Christ will end the disaster. Trusting in the strength of the rich instead of trusting in Christ will end the disaster. If you read Psalm 62.10, it says, Do not trust in oppression and do not vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. So we have to be very careful. After the rebuking, James is giving the reasons for the rebuke from verses 2 to 6. He gives a clear picture of the wealthy unbelievers, their dark spiritual condition. He also points out the divine punishment that is to come from God because of that behavior. There are four points with which we will finish this uh, verses. First, James is rebuking the rich because they are guilty of stocking up their riches. He is rebuking them because they are guilty of stocking their riches. If you read verses 2 to 3, we will know the exact meaning of it. He says, your wealth is rotting away and your fine cloths are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth you were counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment. See, like what James was mentioning those days, things have not changed till this date. People in those days, they were displaying their wealth in three ways. This is done till date. 
they feast lavishly they dress extravagantly and their spending is so wild so this is the same till now so james is targeting these three areas of that flashy lifestyle of the rich people pointing out how foolish it is to center their lives based on their wealth so through time what he says is the food goes bad and the garments are eaten by the moth and the precious metal they tarnished so by stocking rather than sharing the wealth it rots and rust the second reason he gives is he is rebuking the rich because they are guilty of cheating others that's what it says in verse 4 for listen hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay the cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the lord of heaven's armies see instead of giving a fair wage to those who have worked in their fields the rich have cheated them this is one of the sign of selfish rich people reluctant to pay their bills i do not know if you are um uh, aware or you you are able to recollect the recession period in 2008 what happened at that recession period there was also a financial crisis as well at that time most of the business people here in the us what they did was looking into the financial crisis those super rich people they were giving bonuses to themselves huge amount of bonus money they were giving it to themselves but they never paid anything to their employees during that time so you can imagine how greedy those people were those wealthy people were and how generous they could have been so that's the point james is mentioning here and the third one is james is rebuking the rich because they are guilty of selfish lifestyle that's in verse 5 you have spent your years on earth in luxury satisfying your every desire you have fattened yourself for the day of slaughter look at this what he says is the wealthy wicked they were living in such a luxurious life they were enjoying in every other pleasure and they were eating and feasting that was the reason he was saying like fattened their bellies right they were rich in everything and james is trying to give us a picture of a person trying to satisfy the deepest longing of his heart and see like how they were living so lavishly and they were self centered and they had every other pleasure they wanted to have in their life they were eating and drinking and carousing so that was a reason he was rebuking so they were guilty of their selfish lifestyle and finally the fourth point is james is rebuking the rich because they were guilty of taking unfair advantage of the righteous that's in verse 6 the final verse you have condemned and killed innocent people who do not stress his teeth the james is rebuking to the maximum the rich are guilty of judging and putting death the righteous people the right people or the believers see this category would not only include jesus who was the ultimate righteous one 
but also all the believers who are like the lord so includes all the righteous people during those times who were treated very badly and brutally by the wealthy unbelievers so with all the four points why james is rebuking what is the application we get from these six verses as james is using very sharp words targeting rich people who are spiritually poor the very first one we need to know is stocking up riches or wealth will reap miserable dividends that's what we saw in verses 1 to 3 If you look into the face of an unsaved wealthy person there is always stress there is always worry there is always bitterness and above all in spite of all the wealth all the money they have there is an emptiness in them there is an emptiness in them because they do not have Christ in them the wealthy people they discover some some of them they discover that money cannot purchase happiness on the contrary it often brings despair if you look into the history of the wealthy people here in us some of the very rich people who are spiritually poor most of them they have committed suicide many of the celebrities who should have looked into the news headlines people have lost their lives because there was emptiness in them they had all the money that could buy everything but not the love of god the second thing is riches provide no relief in eternity if you if you read proverbs 11:4 it says riches do not profit in the day of wrath but righteousness delivers from the death a day is coming that's what james is saying when god is going to be the judge on that day the unsaved rich will be handed a bill that he cannot pay and all their earthly treasures will be like ashes it's only the righteous person the free gift that comes by the faith in Christ he is a rescued person on the day of judgment and the third point here is unjust acts of the unsaved are not forgotten unjust acts of the unsaved are not forgotten so these are the outcries of the poor people how unjustly and unfairly they have been treated very good example here is how the israelites the hebrew nation they were enslaved in egypt and how they were oppressed and how god did hear them and he was able to deliver them and how god brought a judgment upon egypt so god hears the voices of even today's oppressed people and finally the fourth point here is a lack of judgment today does not mean a lack of judgment tomorrow 
throughout the whole passage whatever we saw like 1 to 6 james is holding the warning of end time judgment against all these spiritually spiritually poor people the believers judgment is behind them jesus christ when he died he bore the full punishment of death and he paid it all on the cross but the unbelievers judgment is ahead of every other person we have to be very clear the one who died or the one who is dying rejecting christ he is a person who not only faces end time suffering but he is eternally separated from god which we know in the verses in revelation through the white throne judgment so if james is illustrating the extreme examples to avoid if you look into first timothy where paul writes to timothy he gives us two principles i will finish this with these two principles first god's concern is not with the actual wealth which is neutral but with our attitude towards wealth that's what he mentions paul is mentioning to timothy in first timothy 6 8 to 10 god urges his people to be content rather than to be longing to be rich what he says in um, the verse 10 of chapter 6 of first timothy is money itself is not the root of evil the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and the second point paul mentions here is god is not against people who are wealthy we have to be very very careful about this god is not against people who are wealthy but against their misguided priorities that's what he if you if you read um first timothy chapter 6 17 to 19 it it's mentioned over there so we have to be very careful that god is not against the wealthy people the rich have a special obligation to be rich in good works to be generous and ready to share so if you keep a right attitude and maintain proper priorities we will not be misled by the riches but we will be spiritually rich by following god's instruction the cure for the pride and the arrogance of wealth is the work of the holy spirit who is always indwelling in us guiding us guarding us telling us what to do what not to do showing us the path that we need to go and let us not lean to the left or not to the right so we always have the holy spirit in us guiding us in the right way so on our humility on our humbleness let us surrender everything to god and with our faith surrender all things and yield everything to him so he will lead us in the right path thank you lord for this wonderful message you have given us always give us a humble heart and always help us to surrender our will yield ourselves totally to your will lord there is nothing of our will help us to have an open heart an open hand in that way we will be able to receive your words your blessings your commands and follow them accordingly lord you lead us in this fallen world so that we will be always a beacon of light 
in the darkness for the people who are living in darkness, Lord. Help us to lead a life that we will be always be salt and light. And let us not bank on the riches of this earth, Lord. Let us always bank on your spiritual wealth, your words, your promises. They are always with us, Lord, because they are always alive and active. That will give us the right way to live a righteous life that will always glorify you, Lord, your name, Lord. Be with us. Be with our family. Help us to lead a life that will always glorify you, Lord. Help us to bank on you. Bank on your riches, Lord, and your promises. Thank you for speaking these words in our hearts. Help us to rivet those things in our hearts and minds, Lord. Be with us. Thank you for this gathering. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Amen.